you'll open up your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3, don't look at verses 1 through 12. My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. For length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase, so your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor detest his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects, just as a father, the son, in whom he delights. If you were to ask most of the older generation that's here today or even out in the world, uh, what happened to them uh, when they were a kid and they were being bad? I'm uh, pretty certain that you're probably going to get a, a little different response than you would today. You're probably going to hear about a belt whooping or uh, maybe many parents sent you out to the tree to get a switch off the tree to come back into the house to get you. Or maybe it, it might have been just an old-fashioned hand whooping uh, that, that they gave you. Uh, certainly different from today's uh, generation. And I, I believe that many of those that received that kind of discipline, those parents that were given that kind of discipline, they fully understood the scripture from Proverbs chapter 13, verse 24. He who spares his rod hates his son, but he who loves him disciplines him promptly. Now you see, that generation, I'm sure, and, and I'm probably a part of it, we hated that stern discipline that we received. We, we didn't like to be whooped uh, for doing things that were bad. Uh, but I believe if you were to ask everybody that received that kind of discipline, uh, what that discipline did for them, I think you would find that most of them would say it made them a better person. It enabled them to be stronger and allowed them to endure some of the harsh things that life can throw at you. And if you've lived longer than a minute, you know that life can be harsh uh, and it will throw you a lot of troubles. Uh, so we, we need that toughness instilled in us to be able to uh, endure uh, those kinds of things. Uh, nobody likes discipline when we're going through them, but we certainly like the results that we get afterwards. Uh, you, you know, how many of you in here feel like you're a better person because your, your parents kept you in line and didn't let you do whatever you want? I think, I, I know I can say I'm a better person. It, it helped me to, to respond. Maybe, maybe you don't care because nobody's responding to that. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's, that's what discipline does. It gets you back on the right path. Now, I'm not saying that we as a society need to, need to resort to child abuse. I, I, I oppose child abuse at any level. But we do need to have uh, sterner discipline in our society. Uh, you know, the, the, the kind of discipline that we've had over maybe the last uh, 10, 20, 30 years has kind of led us down a wrong path. And I think we're seeing plenty of those results in our society today. We see all kinds of younger kids, and I'm glad that we have the best kids on the planet in our church today. But we can certainly see other kids in our society that lack discipline and, and they have bad attitudes and they're disrespectful and, and all the things that the Bible says is going to come in the end times. Uh, we're seeing that in the generation that's coming up. But again, I'm so thankful that we've got nothing but the best kids on the planet and young adults uh, here with us today. 
<laughs> Amen. Did y'all agree with that one? Yay! <laughs> uh, but what do you do with that? Uh, what do you do with that discipline that comes from God? You see, your response to His correction is ultimately going to show where your heart is. Uh, if you love being corrected by God when, when you're getting out of line, when you're doing things that you're not supposed to, and God's word will show you, or maybe a sermon or a Bible study lesson or anything like that shows you the right path to get on. If you love that correction and you respond to that correction and, and you get things right back in your life with God, uh, then that shows that your heart is with God. But if you despise God's word and you despise his correction, that's going to show that your heart is far away from God. So how do you view that discipline from God in your life? And how can we recognize that the discipline is from God and it's not just something that maybe we just happen to go through because we're, we're humans and we're alive? Uh, look back at verses 1 through 6 again. My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands for length of days and long life, and peace will, they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart, and so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. The direction that we have from God in our scripture today is don't forget his commands. We, we must remember what he's commanded us to do. So what are the commands in our scripture today? And those commands are to hold on to mercy and hold on to truth. So what is mercy? What is your definition of mercy? Well, the definition is to have compassion on someone, especially an offender or someone that you have power over. Have compassion on somebody that has offended you or somebody that you may have power over. You see, it's being kind to people. It's being loving towards people. It's forgiving people in your spirit, whether or not that person deserves to be forgiven or not. Is, is to love that person. Is, is to love our enemies. You see, that's what God's mercy is all about. Because that's the mercy that God has shown us. We don't deserve his mercy. But if we turn to him, we yield our lives over to him, he's going to give us his mercy and he's going to forgive us our debts. And he's going to give us an eternity in heaven. You see, that's the truth that we must hold on to. Because Romans 5, 8 says, but God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So we can do life God's way or we can do life our own way. We can do life God's way and, and give out mercy and forgiveness and grace and love and all the attributes that God has or we can do it our own way and we can hold on to selfish attitudes and, and we can hold on to a hateful, unforgiving spirit. and We can do all of these things that go against God. You see, God is trying to lead us down the right path. And when we go down that right path, it's going to be a path that leads us to peace. Peace. If you want peace in your life, if, if your life is all in disarray and, and trouble, uh, how much of God is involved in your life? If you want peace, you've got to give your life to God and you've got to do the things that he wants you to do. And when you do that, you're going to find peace. But if you try to do it your own way and you go against God, that way is going to lead to discipline. So how will you view the discipline that comes uh, from God in your own life? Will that discipline be a blessing to you? Will it help you to grow closer to God? Uh, to be near to God as we sing that song uh, quite often? We as Christians, that's where we want to be. We want to be near to God. So how do you view that discipline? Is it a blessing? 
Or do you view discipline from God as a curse? Why is God against me? I hate God. And we say all these silly things and we look at it as a curse. Something that is, is bothering us. You know, we, we may not understand God's ways sometimes. Maybe a lot of the times we, we don't understand what God's doing in our life. We, we go through different trials and, and we have different heartaches and, and we may not understand it while we're going through them. But hopefully on the other side, we're going to understand everything that God has done in our life. In my life, I can't speak for you, but in my life, I can look back and I can see where God's hand has been the whole time directing me to where I need to be today. Does that mean that I'm perfect? No, I'm probably far from perfect. But what it does tell me is that I know that God's been in my life. I know that God is in my life right now. And I know that God will be in my life in the future. And whatever path he wants me to go down, I know that it's going to be the right path when I decide to follow his lead. Even though we don't understand it, even though we have heartache, God is always at work in our lives. And one thing that God will never do, he's going to lead us down the right path, but he will never lead you down the wrong path. He's never going to take you down a path that leads to sin. If you're on a path that leads you to sin, you're, you're not on a path that God wants you to be on. God will only lead you down the right path. Look at verses 7 through 10. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. If we want to do well in life, if you want to have a good life, a good, honorable life, and, and we talked about that, uh, one of the things that, that Ashley said, she wants to lead her students to a good life. And if we want to do that, if we want to lead our families down the right path, if we want to lead our, our students or uh, other generations or our friends or relatives, family, whatever, we, we need to make sure that we're showing them the right path that's in Christ. And if, if they're willing to follow, and if we're willing to follow, we're going to have a good, enjoyable life. And if we're going to have a good, enjoyable life and follow God's plans, we have to do what? We have to depart from evil. God will not bless us in the things that go against His Word. If we're doing things that go against God's Word, He's not going to bless us. So we must flee from evil. We must honor God with the blessings that he gives us in life. How many of you here in this country feel like that you have a blessed life, that you have a good life, that you have plenty? <coughs> Every one of us probably feel like that. God has truly blessed us. So if we want to do the honorable thing, we'll share them blessings with others. It may be a financial blessing. It may be a uh, uh, some other kind of blessing that you share with somebody. It doesn't, you know, blessings for somebody, doing something good for somebody, doesn't always mean money. It can, but maybe they need your time more than they need your money. Maybe they need your love more than they need that. But that's what God wants us to do, to, to bless others with what he has given us. So do something with the wealth that God's given you. Do something to better his kingdom. And like I said, it could be money. It could be your time spent with somebody. But God has blessed us. And we need to take those blessings and we need to put them in action. And I can tell you that every time that I've given to God, he has given me back more. And I'm not talking about money. Like I said, it could be money. If I give money, God may return that blessing in something else. I'm certainly not a health and wealth preacher. You'll never hear me say, if you give God $100, he's going to give you $200 back. That's not me. 
I don't think God works like that, and you'll never hear that from me. But, you know, maybe if you give $100, maybe God will give you something back that ain't money. Uh, maybe if you give your time to somebody, God will give that back to you in a different blessing. You see, God put us on this earth to honor Him and to serve Him and love Him and to love others. And we can't do that if we're not putting any of His love in action. God's given us the heart to forgive, to love, and to share. And we need to make sure that we give to others. And if you live your life for God, if you live your life following His Word, there's one thing that I can tell you. The blessings are endless. The possibilities of, of your life being greater for God is endless. You're going to have a great life. You're going to have an honorable life. Look at verses 11 and 12. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor detest his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects, just as the father, the son, in whom he delights. You see, even when we mess up and we get off course, and we all do it to some extent, some greater than others, but even when we get off course, God is right there to help us to get back on the right path. He's going to correct us, though, when we're wrong. It may be some tough discipline. It may be some things that we have to go through that maybe we didn't want to go through, but God always corrects those that he loves, just as a parent will correct their child when they're doing wrong. God's going to do whatever it takes to get us walking down the right path. And why does he do that? Because he's a parent that loves his children. He doesn't want to see us go astray. He doesn't want to see us follow the devil's plan. He wants to see us loving each other and forgiving each other and doing all the things that he has done for us. Because that's the type of God he is. And I don't know about the other false gods that are going around in our world today, but I can tell you there's no greater God than the God that we have in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Trinity. God loves us so much. I sent that text out to you all this week. I don't know if any of y'all caught that. I just want to remind you, God loves you. God loves you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word today. Father, we thank you for your precious, beautiful word that directs us and tells us the way we need to be going. Father, without it, we would be just as lost as, as the world without you. So, Father, we thank you for uh, the body of Jesus Christ that was broken and given for our sins. And this word that became flesh, that walked among us to teach us his ways. So, Father, if there's anybody here today, either that's listening through any of the several different outlets we have on social media. Father, that, that doesn't know you, that has never had that relationship with you, or they're lost and they're struggling, and they're having heartaches after heartaches, and they don't know what's going on, Father. I, I just pray that they would come to you today to get on the right path, to get on the path of righteousness so that they can have that good, enjoyable life a life that honors you. So, Father, move your spirit among all those that are here and help us to cleanse out anything that may be wrong in our life and make it right again. Father, we love you and we praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen.